This is the first video which will introduce you to a new module in Snappy called Ptolemy. The Ptolemy module lets you find boundary unipotent representations of free manifolds into SLNC. And what you give the Ptolemy module is the triangulation of a free manifold. And the Ptolemy module can actually give you the Ptolemy variety which is parameterizing boundary unipotent representations of a fundamental group of a free manifold into SLNC. And then it can call SAGE or MAGMA to find the primary decomposition or group map basis of a Ptolemy variety, find the solutions of variety and compute invariants of the, invari of the um, representation such as the complex volume. And this is the first video and I assume that you're using SAGE and when you have snappy installed within sage the usage of of um, of a ptolemy module within sage and within snappy is very similar and to install snappy within sage you can follow the directions which are on nathan dunfield's and mark Collar's web page and this tutorial and more information about how to use ptolemy is um, on www.anhyperbolic.org slash Ptolemy. Good. So to get started, I have uh, prepared a little Sage worksheet. And the first thing is that we load the complement of the figure 8 knot into Sage. And we can easily call the Ptolemy variety method on that manifold for say n equals 3 and voila we get the Ptolemy variety let's call the Ptolemy variety p and in order to actually look what the equations are we have the ideal and this is actually a Sage object. So if you're not inside Sage, but you're just calling Ptolemy from plain vanilla Snappy, you couldn't call this. Instead, you need to call p.equations, and that gives you oops, p.equations, and that gives you uh, the internal representation the Ptolemy module is using in order to, to represent this variety. As I already said, the, the um, ideal is a sage object, so in particular you can do all the things with it you can do with a sage ideal. For example, you can call the group map basis of it. And if you want to if you want to compute the solutions to this ideal, there's an automatic method to do this called compute solutions. And that gives you the solutions. The, the, this is using Sage's native methods um, to compute the, um, the group map basis, especially a primary decomposition. If you use plain vanilla snappy, um, you need to have magma installed in order to actually compute the primary decomposition. Let's save the solutions. And then you notice that the solutions are just a Python list. Um, the Ptolemy variety has several components. Namely, since it's just a list, you can call len on it. So the Ptolemy variety has three solutions. and Up to it has three solutions up to Galois conjugate, and let's just pick one. This solution now looks like a Python dictionary, and if you look at the type of it, it's actually um, an object 
of um, of type Ptolemy coordinates. And this class of Ptolemy coordinates is a subclass of Python of the Python dictionary. So in particular you have all the Python methods for for dictionary available so you can look up a key and now you get the value of this one Ptolemy coordinate here. This value is actually a Pari object and if you want to know the number field we are in you can just call dot mod um, and now no, you know the number field but there's even a shorthand way of getting the number field you can just call number field on solution we can also check that this solution is actually really a solution by using the check against manifold method and it doesn't throw an exception so it's a valid solution and then given this solution to the Ptolemy variety given these Ptolemy coordinates um, you can also compute other things and uh, remember that it's um, the solutions are a superclass of the Python dictionary and there's some additional methods on it for example one additional method is cross ratios you can call it and then it will actually compute the cross ratios of the, of the simplices from the Ptolemy coordinates um, you can do that exactly or you can do this numerically if you have the cross ratios let's call them Z then these are now the exact cross ratios you can also compute for example the volume and note that the volume can only be computed numerically not exactly that's why it has these, um, this, this label here underscore numerical because we are forced to actually convert the exact solutions to numerical solutions and from this one solution we had originally we get several solutions um, when converting to, to numerical solutions which are Galois conjugate and it's a little annoying that they also that for each volume you also get negative of the volume so this uh, convenience for convenience there is an argument you can press called drop negative volumes and we'll just drop the negative volumes and if you want to have this with higher precision then you can just call Pari and set, set the new precision so let's say we want to do 100 decimal digits Um, cross ratios again have similar to, to the Ptolemy coordinates a method to check whether they're actually valid to check them against the manifold and for convenience you can actually you don't need to take the Ptolemy coordinates convert them to cross ratios and then compute the volume but there's um, a direct way of how you can just take the solution and compute the let's start just with the normal volume compute the volume or compute the complex volume whose real part is just the volume and whose uh, imaginary part is the transcendence invariant and um, in this case the, the transcendence invariant the way we computed it's defined only up to um, pi square modulo 6 